Hello and welcome back to my channel. In this video, I will be talking about river rejuvenation and the features that result from the process. A typical river will always try to form a concave shape in its long profile. And remember, concave slope is steeper at the top and gentle at the bottom. This shape indicates that the river is in balance or equilibrium with the environment. If this is achieved, the river is said to be graded. And the river is experiencing equilibrium between the rate of erosion and the rate of deposition. A graded river is the most efficient in terms of its ability to transport water and sediments along its course. Though some rivers may come close to becoming graded in reality, the concept is mostly theoretical as there are constant changes in the environment which hinders this from actually happening. Grade is a balance in both the long as well as the cross profile of the river and in the roughness of the channel. The graded river has all aspects of its channel, including its width, depth, and gradient, adjusted to the discharge and load of the river at a given point. Under this condition, the river has just the right combination of gradient and discharge needed to flow and carry sediments. However, if the volume and load change, then the river's channel morphology must adjust accordingly. Rivers can be kicked into a state of disequilibrium or imbalance because of changes in the environment, such as changes in discharge, sediment supply, temperature, vegetation, tectonic uplift, and damming by humans. Now, When we look at a river in its long profile, we are looking at the section of the river's course from its source where it starts to its base level. And when we talk about base level, we're talking about the lowest level to which erosion by running water can take place. For a river, this is usually the sea level. Base level can change as a result of two main factors. Climatic fa factor, which includes the effect of glaciation and changes in rainfall. And secondly, tectonic factors, which include crustal uplift and volcanic activities. We can group base level changes into two categories. So we can talk about positive as well as a negative base level change. Positive base level change is when sea level rises 
and the rise in sea level is greater than the land rises or the land sinks in relation to the sea. This results in a decrease in the gradient of the river and a corresponding increase in the deposition and potential flooding of coastal areas. I will leave a link in the description box for you to find out more about some of the features that can result from positive sea level change. Now, negative base level change occurs when sea level falls in relation to the land or the land rises in relation to the sea. This causes the land to emerge from the sea, steepening the gradient of the river and increasing the rate of fluvial erosion. This process is Sorry, this process results in river rejuvenation. A river is said to be rejuvenated when it is eroding the landscape in response to the lowering of its base level. Rejuvenation means to be made younger. And so the old stage of the river is taking on the characteristics of its youthful stage once more. Okay? That is the idea of river rejuvenation. Now, as a result of river rejuvenation, the existing features may be adjusted significantly and new features may also form. We can notice these changes in the long profile of the river. Where the rise in the land or drop in the sea level is too rapid to allow the river sufficient time to erode vertically to the new sea level, it may descend as a waterfall over the emerged sea cliff. In time, the river will cut downwards and backwards and the waterfall will retreat upstream. As the waterfall retreats, a gorge will develop. The nick point, usually indicated by the presence of the waterfall or even rapid, is a sharp break of slope in the smooth, concave, long profile of the river. It marks the maximum extent of the newly graded profile. At this point, vertical erosion associated with rejuvenation is at its greatest. The nick point retreats upstream over time. Now, not only do features manifest themselves in the long profile of the river, they also manifest in the cross profile as well. One such feature is an incised meander. 
Meanders are sweeping bends in the rivers. They are usually found along the middle and lower courses of a river where lateral erosion is greater than vertical erosion. When rejuvenation occurs, vertical erosion begins to dominate the lateral erosion that usually occurs in the meander. This results in a steep-sided meander cut into the floodplain called an incised meander. There are two types of incised meanders. These are entrenched meander and ingrown meander. Entrenched meanders are symmetrical and form when the river downcuts particularly quickly. Due to the speed which the river downcuts, there is a little opportunity for lateral erosion to occur. And this is what gives the meander its symmetrical shape. So if you look at the map, notice that the contour lines on both sides of the river is equally close, which means that the sides of the channel are both steep on the inner bend as well as the outer bend. For the ingrown meander, the cross section is asymmetrical. This type of incised meander form when the river downcuts at a less rapid pace. And this gives the river opportunity to erode laterally as well as vertically. So once again, let us look at the map. Notice that the outer bend of the meander has contour lines which are closer together, which means that it is steeper on that side. Notice that, however, on the inner bend, the contour lines are further apart, which means that it is gentle on that side. Another feature developed in the cross profile due to rejuvenation are river terraces. River terraces are old floodplains left perched above the current floodplain and resulting in a series of steps on the side of the river. Following rejuvenation, the river will cut down into its channel and will gradually form a new floodplain. The old floodplain is what is left high and dry as a river terrace. Now, river terraces, just like incised meanders, are of two types. So we can talk about paired river terraces and unpaired river terraces. Paired terraces form when vertical erosion is rapid and unpaired terraces form when vertical erosion occurs more slowly. So let us have a look at the features formed by re rejuvenation once more. 
Notice that at the nick point where the gradient changes significantly, a waterfall has developed. As the waterfall retreats, a gorge will develop. And we also know that rapids could also form at the nick point. Also notice as the old floodplain gives way to the new floodplain, a river terrace is formed. Furthermore, due to increased vertical erosion, the simple meander has deepened to form an incised meander. Okay, so let me leave you with two past paper questions from the Cape Geography Unit 1 exam. To answer these questions in the exam, you need to learn how to draw simple diagrams to show the features. You also need to be able to define terms such as base level, and you should be able to distinguish between the long and cross profile of the river. Remember that the cross profile is a section from one bank to another, while the long profile is a section from the source to the mouth of the river. For question one, part one, you need to point out That base level can both rise as well as fall and can be the result of both isostatic as well as eustatic sea level change. In part two, you are expected to talk about how the features such as incised meanders, waterfalls, and so on form as a result of changes in base level. Bear in mind also that features can also form due to positive sea level change, all right? And so remember to check the description box for the video that will teach you more about those features that result from positive sea level change. Now for part two, or uh, rather for question two, the, the question is similar to part two of question one, but this time it is important for you to know clearly those features that are associated with the long profile, such as, and, and these would mainly be the, the nick point features, like the rapids, the waterfalls, and of course, the gorges that results from the retreat of the waterfall. And then the features that we will notice in the cross-sectional profile or the cross profile, um, would include the incised meanders and the river terraces, okay? So thanks again for watching. Continue to support my channel by liking this video, sharing it with a friend, and of course, by subscribing.